You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the Dean team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You've joined the Dean Team. Uh, it's a special Wednesday night. I have with me uh, your host, sorry, myself, Mezan Abu Zulaf, and I have some very special guests. Uh, brother Malaz, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Brother Mezan. Assalamu alaikum to all our listeners and uh, welcome to another episode of our show. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. It's very uh, good to see you again, Malaz. Always, always a pleasure, Mezan. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Hablos. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Very, very excited today, Abu Muhammad. Alhamdulillah. What is that? Uh, uh, mate, today, today we have a very, very special guest. Uh, subhanallah, I had the pleasure of uh, being in a talk, and then uh, subhanallah, he uh, gave us about uh, 20 minutes of, 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 of his time, and, and <laughs> I remember me and Malaz kept looking at each other. And we're thinking, Allahu Akbar. So I'm very, very, very excited. To you were thinking, we have to have this guy on the radio. Allah, subhanallah. And I, had already I was, I was, <laughs> yani, yani I was genuinely impressed. Genuinely impressed. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Al-Akas, uh, before I introduce you, I just wanted to welcome you. I didn't want to leave you too long before I give you salam. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah, Sheikh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank uh, you for having me over to this program. Well, Sheikh, the, the pleasure is, is all ours. Um, I know I I was um, sadly didn't get to see you at the at the lecture that the boys went to, uh, but I have met you prior to that, and uh, this definitely um, an honor to have you on the show, Sheikh. Um, just before we get into it, I wanted to just give a brief background, and Sheikh, please correct me um, at any time. Sheikh, you you hail you hail from uh, from Saudi Arabia. Right. Yes. Just uh, um, from the Mam, yeah, which is like north, no, east, yeah, east, actually east. on the on the Gulf Coast. Nice. Usually we used to people from like uh, Jeddah and Riyadh and all. Jeddah that, so. is on the very west. Yes. We are on the very on west. the very east. east of Hanla. Um So you've got you know you've got a extensive Dawa background and as a Dai and you know international experience going to all sorts of countries, including you know all sorts of countries, basically South America. The uh, West Indies and that kind of stuff, and you've—I uh, know you've been involved in WAMI as well, the World yes. uh, Assembly of Muslim I, Youth. You're a counselor I, for them. I cooperate with with WAMI and the Rabita and uh, still to this day, Chef? until uh, until tomorrow. Inshallah, inshallah. And uh, and uh, one thing I found, I did find very very interesting, Sheikh. You were uh, you designed and directed, and you were actually very instrumental in the. Uh, What's the program called? The Saudi Arab Cultural Awareness Program for the American Armed Forces. Oh, that's, a, that's a mouthful. But you had quite a big audience there, Sheikh. Is that right? Yes. Uh, I, I called it the, the culture of Arabia. Subhanallah. Yeah. Subhanallah. And uh, you, it was uh, Allah Azza wa Jal made it successful for you that you had quite a number of people that embrace Islam in those, uh, in those presentations. Bifadullah, yes. Inshallah. Well, that's... Uh, it's an amazing, uh, you know, we have quite a lot of experience sitting right in front of us. So uh, I think we should get, you know, into... One, one of, sorry, just yeah. just before we do get started, one of the things that I was blown away with, Sheikh Malish, you know, with, all, with all love and mahabba, <laughs> was I remember watching you sit on the chair and I was thinking, number one, does he speak English? Yeah. <laughs> and then to my surprise, you spoke English and you actually spoke very well. But that wasn't the thing that actually blew me away was... Um, yani, I felt that you were so with our time. Yani, all young and old enjoyed it. So, uh, uh, yani, this this was something that I personally appreciate because this shows that uh, you have been involved with Dawa. Not only that you've been involved with Dawa, but I feel like you're on the ground. You know exactly what the people are thinking. You know exactly what the people are feeling. So this, yani, this connection. From someone, mash, yani, mashallah, of your age, and, and wallahi, I was, yani, I was really, really just blown away with it. Is this, is this something you continuously have to work on, or is this something that comes to you naturally, Sheikh? I object. What do you mean with, uh, with respect to your age? I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. How, well, you're making him, you're making him <laughs> seem, you know. <laughs> is this one of those things, yeah, is yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> Uh, well, uh, alhamdulillah, I ha- yes, I have been traveling uh, uh, to many countries for uh, many years, uh, from Japan to uh, to Brazil, to Mexico, to America, to uh, 
uh, Europe uh, to Africa to in, in India, Philippine Indonesia, <laughs> the Philippines, uh, Lakamba, <laughs> you know, and New Zealand, all all kind of countries. Yes, I've been traveling. And uh, 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 Sheikh, how do you how do you find mixing with the people? Do you find it always a challenge, or is this something that you feel comes natural to you? Well, I I feel I, I enjoy being with people, as a matter of fact. And uh, I the uh, one thing is, I do not feel out of place, no matter where I am, whether I am in the west or the east. In India, I, uh, there are uh, brothers uh, from India that travel with me to India, but then they don't stand the spicy food like I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know. You're very adaptable, Chef. Yes, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, Sheikh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us. And um, look, I really want to ask you about da'wah, because you find you ask a lot of young people today, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they tell you, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a pilot, I want to be a fireman. You, all, you hear all about, about all these different fields. But very little people say, I want to be a da'i. I want to be someone like a sahabi. And here with us in the city today, we have you as a, as a da'i. I call it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell us about how can someone, how can a Muslim, or what should be the Muslim's responsibility in terms of da'wah? First, before, since you talk about the young people and, and the desire to become doctors and, and uh, engineers. I am by profession, an, uh, I am an engineer. I am an electrical engineer. I have done my higher studies in computer sciences and in management. I designed the largest computer, uh, uh, scientific computer center outside America and Europe. So uh, I am uh, a technical person, but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't do DAWA. Dawah is, is a primary responsibility of the Muslims, and we, we only need to understand that lots of people around the world are thirsty, hungry uh, for Dawah, and for you to, to go out there and, and help them uh, uh, solve their uh, a problem. Subhanallah, subhanallah. How, how do, what difference do you find between people in, um, in Arabic-speaking or Muslim-speaking countries and people out in the West? What differences do you see? The Arab people uh, is, have, have seen, uh, you know, they, they see the sunrise every day, so they don't very much appreciate a sunny day. <laughs> but the Western people are people who, when, when every, whenever they, like in London, every time they, uh, the weekend comes about, it is cloudy. And when it is the uh, weekdays, it is sunny. So they get all frustrated uh, that on, sun, on Saturday, Sunday, they do not have the time, you know, the chance to have a sunny day out. Uh, the, the people in the West uh, have uh, a problem with, with religion in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, because the church did not fulfill what they want, and because they are supposed to be the higher in uh, uh, civ you know, civilized world, uh, life nowadays, you know, the, the, the uh, ad advanced countries, uh, one does not feel that uh, if, if my religion is no good, how can a, an awkward uh, a religion coming from an awkward uh, land be uh, yeah. uh, any better? Yeah. So shun all religions. That's one of the differences. SubhanAllah. But in, um, my question, sort of, uh, I'd like to sort of dig into in terms of giving dawah. I mean, we, we are, most of us have been born in Australia or have, you know, migrated to Australia at a very young age, have grown up in this Western place, and we, we want Islam. I mean, us as Muslims, we want Islam. And we want to spread Islam to Muslims and to non Muslims alike. What's, what's your advice in terms of approach? I mean, what approach has worked for you? What approach has not worked for you? The approach in the West especially is, is uh, you know, Western people do not like to be put in a corner. Mm. They need to give them space. Uh, you can lecture a, 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 an Easterner. Uh, you can lecture him or her. And they don't find any problem with that. Not so much. But a, a Western person doesn't like to be lectured. So don't avoid being, uh, you know, the, the, the style of lecturing and telling people uh, what and what not. Yep. Try to get them engaged if you want to do dawah to them. Get them to think and, and uh, question, ask the right questions and things like that. See, you, are, you as a da'i da should, should behave like a good doctor. 
a good doctor does not, uh, as soon as you walk, step into his or her office, does not immediately write, give you a prescription. If, and if he or she does so, you'll never co- go back again to them. Yeah. And in fact, maybe you will t- trash that uh, prescription because you don't value it, even if it was right. Yeah. You would, you would doubt that uh, something is wrong. He or she did not ask me, what's wrong with me? Because mm-hmm. you don't feel that there was any tests? No test, no evaluation, no diagnosis. No diagnosis. So how, come, how can you uh, give me a prescription like that? But uh, better if the, the doctor sits you down, smile at you, ask you about your name, and, and what, what are we complaining about today? And then you start telling him, and then he starts tuning, you know, and asking you interrogatively, and tuning to find out, you know, leave the unnecessary issues and let's concentrate on the issue. If he finds, or she, if he or she finds the answer from only asking you, he or she will what? Give you the prescription and uh, problem done. But if not, he or she will take you to to the bench and look into your eyes and your ears and your nose and your throat and your tongue and your pressure uh, blood pressure and your heartbeat and your temperature, whatever, he will, uh, uh, they will investigate that. And then maybe they come up to a conclusion. But if that is not, pos- not enough, even if they give you something temporary, they want you to go to the lab and do some t- lab tests. And the doctor determines which of the uh, blood tests you will, you will do and which not. Mm. And by, same with the other uh, samples. So, and then if the problem is solved, it's solved and gone. Done and uh, if you need an x-ray, he will send you to the x-ray. If the CT scan, CT scan. MRI, MRI. But he or maybe he will even discuss or, or she, the doctor will, will go and even uh, consult another doctor. Bring a, a consortium together to solve your problem. But if uh, that, all of that is done, then they d- decide what kind of prescription they want to give you or what kind of operation. And so we should uh, allow ourselves to do this, go through this process, if you would, step by step in a calm and easy and thoughtful manner until we find the, the solution and then prescribe it for our audience. So, Yani Sheikh, having I mean, having said that, does that mean that one should, does that mean one should not instigate da'wah? One should wait for for someone to approach him, or can one be proactive and and, and what do you Yani? What is it that you find works best? Uh, I I I should I should uh, I, I, you know with time, you will you will have a feeling as whom you approach and whom you do not want to approach. But yes, proactive is the way to go. Many people actually in, in the, uh, one of the Americans who embraced Islam with us, <coughs> coming from, with all kind of warnings, do not go, co- mm. you know, if they walk on this uh, sidewalk, walk on the other, do not come close to the masjids, do not do that, do not do that, right? They were scared. Oh. They were told to, to observe very closely how they conduct themselves in Arabia. And, and so we made da'wah to some of them. They embraced Islam. And their statement was, please do not leave us to our vice. Approach us. We, are, we want to ask you, we are, but we are not uh, you know, courageous enough to ask you. Let me give you an, uh, sto- another story. Maybe it will enhance our understanding here. Once I went to the Philippines, and I wanted to uh, recruit people uh, for business. And um, then I went to a travel agent to buy the tickets for them, air tickets. And the travel agent was housed in a small corner or portion of a big space, which was an engineering office, right? Right? civil engineering office. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for the tickets to be brought from the, uh, you know, the air- airlines. So as I was waiting, I was watching the three-dimension uh, plans that were put on the, on the wall. Mm-hmm. So someone approached me, 
I said, oh, my, you, you make uh, good uh, designs. Uh, he said, yes. Uh, tell me, how much would uh, a mosque uh, cost to build? He said, it depends on the, on the size. I said, about this uh, number of square meters, about how much? Yeah, approximately this much. Then I said, oh, by the way, do you know anything about Islam? He looked at me and said, uh, a little. He said, do, do you want to know more? I said, yeah. I said, Can, may we sit down? He said, yeah, please. I sat with him, you know, 15 minutes to half an hour. I said, do you want, I wanted to tell you something. I wanted to tell you something. He said, yes. He said, I worked in Saudi Arabia, in Jeddah for four years. And I watched that nice people, good people, are the people who go to the masjids. And I wanted always to ask. Because I was seeking Allah, Allah sent you from your home country to me to answer my question. So there are many people who would love for you to talk to, but uh, they, are, uh, they are ashamed, they are scared, you are scared, you're, you know, you're not sure. Make a little, you know, approach people, be kind to them. Uh, do not start with immediately uh, uh, Islam, but start with something that eventually Can will open them. up, yeah. will open them up, and then you exchange few words and eventually, but two things. One, keep asking, do not make statements, ask interrogatively. Two, keep the steering wheel in your hand. Zoom toward the, the, the final goal in your mind. But you want him or her to be the one who pronounces the final conclusion. Subhanallah, Sheikh, uh, this is um, really sort of mind blowing. And I, I really want to draw from your experience. I mean, all right, let's, let's say that you met me for the first time. I want to learn about Islam. What would be some of the things that you would talk about? If you, know, if you want to know about Islam, then I, I first would ask you if you believe that, uh, that this creation is, is on it, you know, accidental or... So, so you would determine if the person is an agnostic or atheist or has some sort of religion. Right. So that would be the first thing um, that you sort of, you would do in, in, I would, in such I a conversation. I would first establish la ilaha illallah before than anything else. Subhanallah. Uh, what steps depends on, on the situation. Yes. You see, uh, I, I, I gave a, a lecture and I will be giving it tomorrow again. I mean, not it, but the com uh, complemented tomorrow, inshallah, in the uh, University of uh, uh, Sydney uh, techno uh, of Technology. Mm -hmm. And that will be, inshallah, starting at 3 o'clock uh, p.m. And uh, in my first talk, I told them that Dawa is a situational and progressive process. What is it? Situational and progressive process. So it is situational. You have to, def to determine what the situation is. And you don't do de determine it by guessing, but by asking. Yes or, or not? Yes. Absolutely. So you ask, you interrogate, you, you know, approach until you determine what the situation is. A atheist, agnostic, you know, a Christian. Uh, like the doctor, Sheikh. Like you said, like the a doctor, example of absolutely, the doctor, you, right. You judge the, the situation. It's not a one size fits it's all. It's not situation. one, not not one size fits all. Right? Absolutely. And then after you decide that it is what the situation is, then that is when you determine what kind of medicine you want to what prescribe and apply. Subhanallah. Um, Tell me more, Sheikh. Tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> this is so exciting. You know, um, the, the funny thing is, sorry, before, I know Hobbes mentioned before, you know, I saw an incident, uh, incident and uh, he said, you know, Alhamdulillah for, you know, that we have Islam to actually keep us away from all these, you know, from those wayward paths, you know, and, and we sometimes don't appreciate exactly what we have. And it's important to sometimes realize that those people out there have these questions that, you know, very, very important questions, you know, like, why am I here? What are, what's my purpose? And, and as Muslims, I think sometimes we take for granted that we have the answer. Um, so, you know, and to your point, Sheikh, this is where you come in and sort of ask those um, interrogative questions, I guess, to figure out at what stage this person's at so you can apply the right methodology or know at what point they're at so you can take them for the rest of the journey, inshallah. Well, let me, let me, uh, let me uh, highlight one thing here. 
you say we take it for, uh, we take Islam for granted and that we know it. Sometimes some of our brothers and sisters take some, uh, for granted that uh, Islam is what they know, and they uh, live a very shallow life with with uh, the spirit of Islam stripped from it, and, and keep only the names. We ha these people need to be. Um, they are be our beloved brothers and sisters, but they need to be helped uh, uh, to come back to realize what is really uh, 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 the meaning of, of Islam. Believe me, I was talking yesterday with a Saudi Arab who is, mashallah, very good. I started talking to him about Tawheed that blew his head uh, beyond what he expe what he what he was thinking all the time. So is there room for me to learn? Absolutely. You, me included and everyone included. There is lots of room for us to, to uh, learn and appreciate what our deen provides. Sheikh, um, if you don't mind me asking, because just like I was saying to you before Mezen, was that sometimes I'm faced with a situation where the individual is telling me about personal problems he has in his life. And I know that Islam has the answer to these little problems that he has in his life. Yani, I'll give you an example. Uh, me and my brother aren't speaking. Little things that I know that through the sunnah of Rasulullah there there's an answer to all of these problems. But the person is a non-Muslim. Do I introduce Islam into solving his little, I don't know if you can call it, you know, like his little problems? Or would I be completely missing the point of deen? Is the point of din because obviously the point of din is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to, but can I introduce Islam to a non Muslim to solve his little problems that, that he has as far as being able to forgive, being able to deal with one another, how to give rights? Because I find that people are struggling in everyday life that Islam has a solution for. I think I think when faced by a situ with, with a situation like that I would use it as an opportunity because, you see, especially if it is a friend or already someone who trusts you. You see, one of the barriers a da'i has is the building a bridge of trust bet him, between him or herself and the audience, mm -hmm. then the other side. Now, if this is a friend and the bridge is somewhat, really even good. if it is not the strongest possible, but still there is a, uh, even if I shake a bridge, but it will help me cross over, then uh, I should use that bridge. I should use the bridge to solve the root problem instead of the immediate, the, the, the surface problem. You see, this is most of the time when we analyze problems, we analyze them superficially. And we want to you know, talk about the, pro the, 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 the terminal cause. But terminal cause, most of the time, doesn't solve the problem. It is the root cause that if we solve, will solve that problem and many other problems. So why don't we start talking to the brother or sister to find out what the root problem is and what is the cause? behind that root problem and what can or what we can do about that cause and what are the alternatives and what are the difficulties and what how to overcome those difficulties then we are mashallah above the, the you know you protein. make it seem so uh -huh. <laughs> you, 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 on, honestly I yani, just like I was saying to you before the show when it comes to giving da'wah to non-Muslims I'm a big coward a very big coward. Yani I love my deen and I'm convinced with my deen, alhamdulillah. But when it comes to giving da'wah to non-Muslims, Sheikh, I just can't do it. I, 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 I really don't know why. I just can't build. And I think it's because for myself, yani if I'm speaking to a Christian, Sheikh, okay, I'm speaking to a Christian, someone, who, yani someone who's a practicing Christian, you know, I always put myself in his shoes. Yani I'm a... F yani, to, to, to somewhat extent, and in my own right, I'm a firm believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And inshallah ta'ala, yani I know, I believe that nothing will ever shake me or break me or take me away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing will ever take me away from this deen. Taib, does this mean, like, see, I always assume, Sheikh, that he feels the same way about Christianity. So therefore, coming to talk to him about Allah and, yani, like, it's like, it's like a Christian coming to give me da'wah, Sheikh. I think I'll have a heart attack. What, what do you eat, like... You're coming to talk to me about your deen? You know what I'm saying? I tell you, I tell you one thing. I th- uh, there is a fallacy in, 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 in discussion. If I asked a Christian, for example, what is your belief about Christian, uh, Jesus Christ? Firm belief. That's a fundamental article of his faith. That's the, the, core. Pillar, the, pillar right, the core, right? And suppose he were to, or she were to answer, I believe he is the son of God. Where, 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 where do we fall short? We fall short thinking that what the words mean exactly what they say. We take it at face value of what he just said. Jesus is the son of God. We think maybe he is. Jesus is the child whose parent is God. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean that. Because ask the same person, especially if it is a, a man, are you the son of God? And the chances he will say, yes. Okay, so you are the son of God. How about Moses? Is he the son of God? Yeah. So you are the son of God. Moses is the son of God. And Jesus is the son of God. What is the difference in this sonship? You think this is clear to that person? Absolutely. Most of the time, not. not. It's not clear. So whenever somebody say something, or you believe something about your conviction, do not necessarily assume or, or assume that ne- that person necessarily has the same conviction. And maybe he, is, he or she is confused. And believe me, when you ask this to a scholar in Christianity, they go away not knowing what to do, what to say. They're not necessarily clear about what is meant by Jesus is the Son of God. Is it good dawah to, not to attack, but is it good dawah to confront people about their religion? Yeah, I mean, is it, is it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, is it good dawah for me to sit there with a Christian and somewhat, fake, yeah, yeah, I mean, somewhat sh- shake his foundations and then say, look, Islam is the answer? Or is it a better approach, Sheikh, to just speak about Allah and speak about Islam? It depends on the situation again. again. There is no uh, 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 a good answer, uh, you know, right correct right. answer all the time right. or... or uh, clear, clear cut. No, it's no clear cut. So uh, I would say no confrontation. Our idea is in Dawah is not to break people's heart or to belittle them or to... Describe them as, as uh, you know, not understanding or, or not uh, sincere or any of this. Uh, no, no, no. They may be very good meaning people. Well, they do not necessarily mean bad. But the fact is we need to highlight some of the things that they t- may take for granted without... Because you see, the problem with most people is from childhood... They start asking questions, but they get so much, you know, punished, for lack of a better word, for asking those questions. They give up. Uh, reprimanded, they are spoken uh, down at, and they are, you no know, until they give up. Yep. And therefore, whenever you talk, you want to take about, talk about religion, without realizing, in the back of their mind, he they think... Off. Oh yeah, I mean, this is the dangerous uh, area. Uh, please go away from it. You Dangerous know, for you is no, no. you believe and I believe. Let's be friends. Yeah. So how do how do you how do you find this, Mizan? I know that that you deal with a lot of new Muslims or or, or or with a lot of you know Australians who come to these courses. How do you feel their approach is usually? Well, actually, uh, we were very lucky to have the sheikh at um, at one of our at a, at one of our lessons the other week. He's and, busy uh, man, the sheikh. Yes, yes, he's we've everywhere. Heard, he's everywhere, and uh, we've. Um, I think generally the the way we approach it uh, is sort of the way that the sheikh described. Um, in that we don't sort of 
one, one of the key things that we, we've noticed is obviously people don't want to be judged when they approach you. And it's already them making that effort to come and see you is already out of their comfort zone. So the first thing, the, the last thing they want to be is judged. You know, especially, for instance, we do get cases where, you know, a Muslim female brings her non-Muslim boyfriend, let's just say. Or vice versa, you know, a Muslim male brings a non-Muslim female and, you know, okay, we can make a judgment, but then that's not going to help the situation. And if anything, that might drive that person away. So the fact that they've already made that step towards us is, is a very good thing. And that's in a good condi- you know, that's a good position to be in. And then it's, again, presenting, presenting the facts as best we can, as simple as we can. And that sort of sows the seed. And we take it from there. Mazen, I, I, I wouldn't even... I know you use, we use in the West, we use the expression judgment. Mm. But I, I, it's not that I, I, do, I do not want you to make judgments. You make them in your heart. Yes. Uh, but what, is, uh, what you need to say here probably is, you, is consider priorities. Right. Yep. I do not approve ABC. Oh, yes, of course. But at the same time, it's not a priority. Yep. Very true. Because very true. That's a beautiful way to approach it. You know, uh, uh, shirk is gonna distance you to g- distance the person to hellfire, but zina is going to be temporary, maybe even forgiven. Subhanallah, subhanallah. That's a very good way to put it, Sheikh. Yeah. That's a very good way to put it. Yeah. So I mean, sometimes we do get asked questions, and then we sort of say, look, the position is that you know. This is a position, either it's not allowed or it's detested or it's completely forbidden. Uh, but like you said, there are, there are priorities that we address, try to address. Sure. The I, I would, uh, if, uh, if you allow me, I would, I would sometimes even uh, deny answering that question before I finish the first one. SubhanAllah. Even if I am asked specifically, I am not allowed religiously to make a, uh, you know, a, 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 a hukum, a, an a evaluation, a ruling, on an act against the teachings of Islam. That is, uh, that is shirk. That's kufr, rather. Right? I do not make that uh, ruling. But I, I postpone speaking about that very issue until we finish the most priority issue. You know, uh, you know the highest priority yeah. issue. Yeah. Right? True. Yeah. You wanted to say. Sheikh, when you, um, when you are approached or when you're speaking to non-Muslims and... Yani, let's just give a very basic example, right? Um, you know, I've approached you and I say to you, uh, tell me about Islam, right? Um, do, you, do you concentrate your talk only on Allah and His Prophet? Or would you go down as far as uh, Islam teaches us to not steal, to not lie, to be good to the neighbor? Uh, yani, do you go that, that far or do you mainly concentrate on Allah and His Prophet? No, I probably would would uh, make Allah and His Prophet as a conclusion, but I probably would start with love. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Are you guys taking notes? <laughs> this or what? is this is is this being recorded, Mazen? Being recorded. Allah Akbar. And honestly, you see, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You see, we we don't we confuse two things. Honestly, we confuse two things: the entry and the conclusion. The conclusion is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, yes. But it doesn't have to be the starting point. What, what, what about when you're, when you're speaking to a Muslim person that's far away from his deen? Would you okay. start with the same approach, with the love approach, or would you start by reminding him of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and lead him to the smaller, finer details? Well, I, 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 again and again, I want to find out why he or she is away from his deen. Mm-hmm. After I discover that, I will... Work on what what I approach first. Again, I uh, d- do I operate on your cut finger? The answer is yes or no. But there is an appendix that's about to explode. So what do I do? <laughs> Let the finger bleed. <laughs> that's it. So <laughs> so you have to determine what the priorities are and work accordingly. And I'm sure this comes with experience, I mean, realizing or exactly finding the right diagnosis for each person that you approach or, or you speak to. Right. And this, this would come with experience. Right. Sheikh, your, your, um, your approach to Dawah, um, if you don't mind me asking, was this something that has been passed on to you by your Mashaykh, or has this been a style that you've personally developed 
over time and experience. So stay alone and develop. SubhanAllah. And is this just from trial and error and... and Trial, error, I mean, uh, you know, picking what is good, uh, you know, listening to you and uh, saying, oh, this, he's, he's doing this wa- well, I'll, that it is something I copy. He's doing that not so good, I, I want to change it, modify it. No, no. And go on from there. Yani, are you continuously looking at what other Muslims are doing as far as da'wah is concerned for your own personal growth? Yeah. Or, or, yani, you know, if, I, if I were to watch or, you, or someone like yourself, have you reached the, yani, have you reached the state where you're happy with the way, with your system is going? The the moment I reach the the state where I feel I am happy with the way th- are, uh, things are going, maybe I should go myself. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> Sheikh, I, I I really love your energy, Allah Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Honestly, no, it's it's. If we don't grow, we are stones. Subhanallah, Sheikh. This this leads me to another question. I think quite a very uh, an important one that um, a lot of our listeners might be thinking about. I mean, I might be working in my office, might be working on the trade, might be a salesman, um, and I, w- I would like to call to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, whether it's to Muslims or non-Muslims. What what kind of knowledge do I need? What kind of um, courses do I need to, to take to become a da'i? How do, how does one become a da'i? If if I'm living my day to day life, how do I become a da'i? What kind of Courses, knowledge, education, how much Qur'an, how much Sunnah do I need to have before I can become a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first thing you need to learn is to say, I do not know. <laughs> and, and to have the courage to say so. And I think that in itself is a, that is a big challenge in itself. That's so. a big achievement. So if you know how to say, I do not know, I'll search it and come back to you, right? Then you have done uh, already advanced so much. So can, can I take that as a big don't of Dawah, Sheikh? That yeah, yeah, do not. Uh, the opposite of that being never, answering never just answer feeling something to answer. Without, without, without true knowledge. SubhanAllah. Because now, when you speak as a da'i, as Sheikh bin Thameen put it, you are signing for Allah. Who, are, who am I to sign for Allah without basing that on Qala Allah, Qala Rasulullah? <laughs> so that's one step. That's one step. The other step is you want to understand yourself the meaning and value of Tawheed. You know, the, the qualities of Tawheed. That you believe in Allah, that, that Allah is a Razzaq. Not your efforts, not, not your, your boss. brains, not your boss, not your company. It is Allah who is Allah made it conditional that he will work, but he is the one who provides. There are lots of people who are smarter than I, but I am richer than them. And there are many people who are so stupid, but they are much (laughs) richer than I. Right? So it's not by smarts. There are people who work very hard, and at the end of the day, they have only enough for buy the basic food. There are people who are, you know, so lazy, yeah, and they get. I was sitting with with someone, and uh, that was in uh, in Singapore, I guess it was, and uh, or Indonesia. And over five minutes talk, I was sitting like a simple employee, uh, but he's my friend and he's a business person. And in five minutes, he made a million dollar profit. Subhanallah. And it was coming to him on a tray. He was not working for it. Somebody brought the business all the way to him, only for him to nod and say yes. I will, I will take it and make money. One million dollar in five minutes. Subhanallah. You know, I he and I were traveling together. He could have paid for for our trip in in the best uh, restaurants and best hotel, <laughs> only as a as a as a as a fraction of that uh, that profit that he made that moment. So. Uh, you know, we, we have to uh, consider that, that uh, what was I, what brought us tawheed, to this? Tawheed, Tawheed. We have to learn the meaning of true Tawheed. And, that, and, and yeah, I, I said Allah al-Razzaq. The qualities, everyone remembers Allah al-Kareem, al-Rahman, al-Rahim, al-Jabbar. But what do these mean? To what, you know, what, what? What do I learn from? What is my benefit that Allah is a Jabbar? What do I do with it? 
But if I learn what Al-Jabbar means, and, and there are very many benefits that come to me. Al-Jabbar meaning the, is the, the what? What's the first meaning that comes to Jabbar? Comes with strength, meaning strength. of strength. But also it comes from the one who, who if you are broken, Yajbur. He means. If you do your salah and it is not complete, he means that. If you are if you're having personal problems, he's the one who means that. If the relation between you and your loved one is slightly uh, cracked or something, he means that. He's a jabbar, yajbur. So it's not, let's stop by the meaning of jabbar and see how much uh, 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 grace we, we get from his name al-jabbar, alone. And when an enemy attacks you, he's al-jabbar. He is the most powerful. He will, he will uh, uh, da- uh, you know, destroy him if, if he wants to. So in many ways, only one name of his great name, Subhanahu Jalla Shana, we are we, we we will live very very happy only by one name, let alone the other names. So Tawheed, mm-hmm. we need to we need to internalize that, live that, and it will actually uh, uh, appear on our uh, person. Manifest, it will manifest. Manifest on itself, the absolutely. And people will be. You know, do not know, but they would Im- be influenced by you. But you, your heart should be filled with true tawheed. There's, there's two different opinions when it comes to da'wah. One person will tell you, Abu, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu ali knew la ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah, and on the second day he brought five people to Islam um, with no knowledge of, of ahkam, etc., etc. Another point of view, other side of the coin, will tell you, no. Only a sheikh, only a da'i, only a person that understands the Qur'an, understands the Arabic, understands the sunnah, the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has been, trained has been trained, can call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are your thoughts on these opinions? I have no thoughts. The Rasul told me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ballagu anni walaw ayah. No. He, so he told me, if, uh, convey even if it is one ayah. I'm not a alim with one ayah. So I convey one ayah. Alhamdulillah, I've done my job. So where do I start? See, very trick, very, very shaitanic trick tells you I have first to be, I have to become perfect myself. Yeah. Then I can do da'wah. Yeah. Rubbish. You start da'wah and you are, you know, you see, when you are, in, when you, when you were a student, the more you, if, if you had chances to, you, to explain a subject to another student, the more you understood the problem better. Sure. Of course. So explain, so. Explain Islam to others. And then you will find yourself knowing Islam better. SubhanAllah, actually, Sheikh, I was just about to ask, have you found that giving da'wah has increased your knowledge? Have you found that by giving da'wah, it's increased your iman, conviction. it's increased your conviction with Allah? Yes, indeed. It increases that and then make, it makes me, put me on the edge where I do not know and then I have to go, go and hit the library. Allah. That's beautiful. You know, subhanAllah, Sheikh, you were, you were saying before about, uh, you know, you were saying before that the first step is to say, I don't know. SubhanAllah, um, I was once hearing a brother who was also encouraging others to give da'wah, and he also touched on this. And he said, you know, the biggest fear we have is if I'm in da'wah, and someone says to you, you know, or someone is to ask you a question that you don't know how to answer. He says, well, then you should proudly say, I don't know. So someone in the crowd says to me, but brother, what if he was to say to you, what sort of Muslim are you that doesn't know? He said, I'll proudly say I'm an honest Muslim. Right, absolutely. And before I'm an honest me, Muslim who genuinely doesn't know, but I can get back to you. you know? And before me, before me and before you was an Imam Malik. Someone comes all the way from Maghrib, from Morocco. To and Medina. he asked to Medina. Uh, to Medina. And asks him a question. He says, I do not know. And he was and he one said, of the biggest scholars. Yeah, he's uh, one of the, the greatest scholars. scholars. He was the scholar of his, of his time. time. <laughs> and he said, I do not know. He said, what do I go to? What do I'm going back to Morocco? What do I say to people? <laughs> so tell them, Malik says he doesn't know. I love that story. Subhanallah, subhanallah. I mean, really, if there's if there's a test, it's got to be that one. Allah you know, because it's not like you're a, you're a, you're a sheikh, 
yeah. there's another sheikh. He's coming to the scholar. He's coming to the pinnacle of its time. Absolutely. And the guy says, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> sheikh, some, sometimes when you're trying to give da'wah, um, people criticize you. and they, they tell you, you're not perfect. Why don't you work on this? Why don't you work on that? Instead of going out and preaching to people. Um, how can how can someone approach this this issue that's very common in, in our day and time? I think people use that as a defense mechanism by pointing out your own faults and say, "Look, you're not perfect. Why should I listen to you?" Uh, are you going to listen to me when I am perfect? Uh, is this is the question to I, the person. I, w- I want to answer. Uh, I'll say yes. Are you going to be there when I am? I become perfect. <laughs> 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 that was a trick question, sir. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love Subhanallah. it. I will never be perfect. <laughs> no one is perfect. Anyone who claims perfection is stupid. <laughs> Doesn't know what he or she is talking about. Nobody is perfect. It is beautiful that we are not perfect. If we are perfect, we will buy the first release of the phone and never buy another one <laughs> because it will be perfect from the day go from the word go. <laughs> Because it, we are not perfect, we get releases, alhamdulillah. It would Next be month. nice, but Sheikh, you know, we're forever spending money on these things. <laughs> but, but that's the beauty of it is that we, we, are, we, we have something to look forward to. Subhanallah. If, if, if I get everything perfect for the first thing... It would be very dull. It would be dull, wouldn't it? Subhanallah. Sheikh, uh, this is uh, uh, it's very valuable having you with us. And well, I want to try and draw as much experience as I can from you and out to the listeners as well. We, we haven't said anything about the sisters. How, how can the sisters, our sisters in Islam give da'wah? What's, what's their role in terms of da'wah? Have they paid you for this, Manaz? No, they haven't. But, is, uh, is, 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 she, is she a wife? <laughs> it, 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 it could be a wife, a sister, any, any Muslim sister out there that would like to get involved in da'wah. But, I mean, she's not, she can't sit up on stage and give talk to men she can't um, um, how, how does a Muslim woman give da'wah if she's a wife yes let me let her show me how good a wife it she is she would be doing da'wah let her be known to be the, the most the, 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 the wife that, that receives her husband with a big smile with a big welcome with uh, uh, already washed up already uh, dressed up Already ready to sit with him and, and to comfort him and ask him about his day. Allah. I'm taking notes here. <laughs> right? Let her be known if she is a, 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 a daughter, how kind she is to her parents and how kind she is to her sisters and brothers. If she is a, 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 a mother, let her, let her, uh, let's, uh, her be known how good she is raising her kids and how good she is to her husband and to her neighbors and so on. These are dawahs. You do not have to go there and, and uh, yeah, roll your sleeves. Yeah. Yeah, but Sheikh, you know, subhanAllah, these, I feel like that these were things that women once took honor in. But today, everything that, that you've mentioned, Wallahi, it's beautiful. Yeah. But today, everything you've mentioned is everything that they attack. That you know that you know, is this all you've had to offer? Is this all that you've done? You know, you know, like you know, what I'm saying like you know, you know, there's, what? there's you this poison of you know, I have like oh, being a good wife, being a great mother. Really, I've done nothing. So I feel that we we are really starting to undermine these issues. Subhanallah. What when a woman goes leaves home, and she goes to a factory, what does she br- produce? Gadgets. Whatever the factory produces. Gadgets. Yeah. Which is more important, gadgets or the nation? The next, the next generation, subhanAllah. The nation is more important than the gadgets. Which is, if you do the greater uh, gadget or the little gadget, so one who does the, um, uh, manuf- you know, manufactures the smartphone or one who makes the widget of the door, which one do you consider to be? The smartphone. Smarter. Or b- better quality, you know, qualified. Of course, the smartphone. The mother produces the nation, taking her away from producing the nation. She, we are taking her away from producing the best, the most important stuff. Second, we are taking her from one boss, who, loving boss, to many bosses. When you are at work, my brother. Don't you think that this is only your bo- immediate boss who evaluates you? 
It is he and his uh, colleagues and your colleagues and his boss and everyone, a customer who comes and takes service from you. All of them will feed in your, the evaluation of your, the performance, of your performance in the job. For, for my sister, she is evaluated by her loved ones, her, wife, her, her husband and her kids. <laughs> is this being recorded, Nazim? I think, I think Hablas, this is the first time Sheikh that Hablas has actually been quiet. <laughs> Allah, Allah. <laughs> Sheikh, I, I can't help but think when you, when you speak, Sheikh, as well, I can't help re- but remember these, the mothers of the great Imams like Imam Shafi that would take him and drop him off at Fajr and wait for him. And, you know, like these, these, these are the people you're speaking about, Sheikh. These are the people that took on that responsibility of raising these great men. And if it wasn't for these ladies, obviously through the, the you know, uh, success for, uh, that is from Allah, then you know, Imam Shafi wouldn't have been, for instance. You know, you, you know who, who is the most uh, mentioned in the circles of, of uh, Islamic studies? Abu Huraira. The most mentioned. Aisha. No. Yeah. Abu Bak- uh, 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 Al-Bukhari. Al-Bukhari, Al-Bukhari, yes. You know, Al-Bukhari is mentioned more than Abu Bakr. We know Abu Bakr is better than Al-Bukhari. Yes. But Al-Bukhari is mentioned more than Abu Bakr. You know Al-Bukhari, Rahimahullah, his father died when he was less than six or six? Subhanallah. Who raised him? His mother. See? She produced for us Al-Bukhari. Allah. Whose book comes second to Quran. <laughs> Right. Subhanallah, you find that we have this perception of dawah. It's it's either so, hearing a talk, either going to the mosque and listening to a, to 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 a sermon, or watching some sort of video on YouTube. I mean, we have such a limited perception of of what dawah is um, in in our day and time. And and you're putting a very beautiful um, painting, a very beautiful picture for us, Sheikh. That it's not only the words; it's also the actions. And this is something that that we find that's lacking in our day and time. Uh, and, and, and we should, we should re- uh, go back and, and improve the way we live our life. Learn Islam and live by it and encra- encourage everyone to live accordingly. SubhanAllah. Subhanallah. Sheikh, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, if you don't mind me going down a different path now. For someone like yourself who has been involved in Dawah and uh, alhamdulillah you've traveled the world, you've seen Muslims all over the world, you've seen Dawah in so many different forms. What are some tips that you can give us, some advice that you can give us for the Australian Muslims here as far as do's and don't do's? Because yani, I find that in the community, there's a lot of drive and there's a lot of emotion and there's a lot of passion. But I feel sometimes a lot of our energy is wasted. Do you feel the same or do you think it's all khair? Inshallah khair. I, I, I do not want, uh, you know, to, to uh, discourage, you know, uh, discourage your, your passion. But uh, uh, let, me, let me ask us all to look for what is good in the other person. Learn, my brother in Islam, he's not exactly uh, on the same manhaj, but what is good about him? Let's not let, uh, pick uh, uh, about everyone and pigeonhole everyone and segregate everyone. Let's bring us together. There are more common things amongst us. I'm not saying uh, let us uh, compromise our true faith. No, astaghfirullah, wudu billah min dhalik. But another thing we have to consider is when someone believes, we think he believes or she believes one thing. Let us make sure that it is not um, a, 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 an issue of knowledge, wrong information. Not that I am completely convicted to something, but that is the best I know. If you come and highlight the misconception I have, I may sh- change what? My conviction. So there is room for you to improve me and for me, me to improve you. Let's cooperate. That's a very good point, Sheikh, because I know um, there, there is a lot of, um, from my experience, there is a lot of um, energy expended on, on things 
um, between different, you know, like you said, different groups or different people from different persuasions, even though they all sort of try and work towards the same thing. And that does take away from the momentum that we gain as a community. Um, but I think also you you mentioned, Hobbes, I think maybe the angle you are taking as well is just in general, uh, us as a community. I mean, I've, we've said this before, but I guess we generally are compared to other nations like, say, England or America as a Muslim community still relatively junior, right, very, in very Australia very at least. And uh, so we still, you know, those other countries in terms of Dawah, in terms of spreading Islam, are still, you know, a few years, maybe 10, maybe 15 years ahead of us. Um, so we do still have this, um, uh, you know, we're going through a maturing process at the moment where we're learning from our mistakes, we're trying to find things different. A lot of organizations have been around for a while now, so we're, we are learning. But, yeah, I think maybe the, way, the angle that Hoblos was taking was, um, you know, is there something that you've maybe seen in your travels and your own experience, be it in Arabia or abroad, that um, you know helps to cement that you know cement our role in the community, you know, in terms of Dawah? Let me let me. I think uh, first let me congratulate you all, because I have been to places where uh, there were other Lebanese <laughs> who lost it. Their kids do not speak Arabic. They do not have of the deen except very shallow understanding. By grace of Allah, I see amongst my, I'm, I'm in this community, people who are dedicated, are somewhat learned in, in about their deen. These are things to be congr- uh, congratulated for. Mm-hmm. So congratulations. You are better off than other places. Uh, whether you are junior or senior. Uh, the, uh, the thing is, uh, you want to work on is not losing it. It is easy, very easy to water things down. See, it is not. I am not concerned about your generation here, but your uh, children. Are they going to be trained well enough to keep their commitment to the to the deen and the true knowledge of the deen, or not? And it will take. A lot, a lot more doing than your father and mother did for you back home. Maybe you arrived here, some of you arrived here mature. Uh, and, and some of you arrived here and were, had the opportunity to be surrounded by the right uh, uh, environment. There will be situations where your kids may not have the same opportunities. And uh, as one of my brothers said, the differences between these two groups, they forget that tomorrow maybe a, a child from group A will get married to child a child family. from group B. And so better we as group A and B now come together. So maybe our kids will have a better chance. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Sheikh, uh, I really want to know how you, you prioritize when it comes to timing between work, between da'wah, between seeking knowledge, between... Um, you know, calling to Islam, telling people about Islam. How do you find the time or give yourself prioritization? Uh, first, first, time management is a, is a must. You cannot uh, just run your day in and out without considering what you want to do. Give, but do not do everything at its right time. Do not busy yourself with, the, with the, uh, priority B when you are working on A. Finish A and then attend to B. And if you cannot reach C, be it. Uh, There is always time for for someone who wants to do something, provided we make it a, a plan. You see, those who go to the gym, subhanAllah, they have time. How come? They made, uh, uh, they forced themselves, they made time Mm. to go to the gym. So if if I decide that this slot of time over the week, I am going to do that for da'wah, and I take that time, no matter what, as a priority. I drop everything else and do da'wah in that time, right? And attend to the other things. Make sure that when, when the time comes for da'wah, all the other priorities are taken care of. Not, uh, I, I ignore my other duties and I concentrate on this issue alone. Some people do that. 
They forget about their children. Mm. And they think they are doing da'wah. No, thank you. Take care of your wife and your children first. And then you, you do da'wah. You don't, you don't uh, uh, neglect them, neglect them and, 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 uh, because they are a must. Da'wah is a second degree. So uh, priority is what you have to do. Allot- allocate uh, time to uh, every activity and you will find yourself able to cover A, B, C and D. Allah, Sheikh, another question. I'm, I've, I've got so many questions in mind. Um, there's, there's in our modern day and time, people think that da'wah is, for example, Facebook, and I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of social media, and they think that my role as a da'i is to maybe post a video, put a quote as a status from the Qur'an, put a hadith, and this is my part. What's the responsibility of, of the Muslim? What's the minimum requirement for a Muslim living in Australia in our day and time? See, one thing we have to consider, to be personally involved has its own returns. You can do it remotely by uploading a YouTube or sending a link to someone. But you are not necessarily physically, emotionally involved. What will improve you is the emotional and personal involvement. You may not be improved by just sending me YouTube links. Yeah, because it becomes... Too mechanical. Has to be a personal touch. Believe me, even even uh, take this from me. If you t- this business of uh, zakat al fitr, you give three dollars or whatever, or ten dollars, and say this is a kar- my zakat al fitr. It doesn't have the same effect as taking the very thing and going to the poor person in person and shaking hand with that individual and giving him the the gift. Doing it remotely doesn't do the job. You have to be involved. To feel the actual spirituality feel, of it. Yeah, and, and to, to give you the, the satisfaction and soothe you and raise you up. It's very, <laughs> it's very nicely put. <laughs> well, believe me. I, we, we believe you, we believe you, Sheikh. <laughs> we believe you, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Barakallah, Fikr, Zakumullah, Khair. Allah, it's, uh, it's, it's, very, uh, it's very good to have you with us and, um, you know, um, subhanAllah, so much experience and um, uh, what about in terms of responsibility? I mean, as, as a Muslim in Australia, what's the minimum responsibility that a Muslim must do in terms of da'wah? In terms of da'wah, unless you start doing da'wah, if you don't your, lose your religion, your, genera- your, your children will. SubhanAllah. But is, is if it, you want yeah. to preserve your deen, you have to do da'wah. You cannot escape that. Yes, Allah, and and I think I think this is a beautiful point because sometimes we think that da'wah is to save humanity, but Sheikh, I really like how you put it. No, da'wah is saving your own din. Also, absolutely. Yeah. Because I, I I gave in the masjid my example, didn't no. I? Yes, yes. About the one hundred thousand square kilometer defense. You want to give that example, Sheikh? Well, I I am saying suppose I I am uh, I am res- uh, I was given the task of defending 100,000 square kilometer. And I, my defense was so highly efficient, 90%. What does it mean after the first encounter, how much land will I be left with? 90,000. 90,000. Did I lose? Of course. I lost 10. And the second encounter, 81. Third encounter, 72. Fourth encounter, 63. Fifth, fifth encounter, 54, and, and so on, right? But if I, uh, 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 I uh, proactive, if I am proactive, only 10%, then I start with 100,000, and for after the first encounter, what happens? You lose 90. Hmm? You lose 90. No, I am... I am proactive 10%. Okay, proactive, oh, yeah, okay. Bridging that 10% gap. So, you so how much... How much would I, would I end up with? 100,000. 110. 110. 110, sorry. Yeah. And the second encounter, 121. And the third encounter, 133. Although my efficiency is very low. If you want to defend your uh, religion, be proactive. Put in the effort. But if you want to be only defensive, thank you, goodbye, you're leaving. <laughs> Eventually. Eventually. Eventually, this is the end. Eventually. 
That's the first uh, steps to disappearance. And you find that, and you really, you find this example here in Australia. You find that the Afghans came to Australia a very, very long time ago. Over a hundred years ago. They they over a hundred years, but then they lost it. And I think this is the prime reason, was because there was no Dawah. So you find now that uh, so many times, so many times you'll meet someone who comes from, from the country. His name is Michael Khan. Mm. Khan. There is no Khans here in Australia. No, no, my, my grandfather was an Afghan. And then you ask, how much do you know about Islam? Nothing. What connection do you have to Islam? Nothing. And I think this is it, Dawah. When there is no Dawah, this defense system of yours, you lose. And it's one generation after the other until eventually you become a Michael Khan with no connection to your deen. And if you have no plan, you are in the plan of someone else. Very, very true. Very true. <laughs> we need you here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't think, yeah, I think you have to change your travel arrangements, Sheikh, to actually stay here. <laughs> well, if you give me a residential, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll be more than happy to stay. SubhanAllah, Sheikh. It's, um, uh, Ola, we would love to have you uh, actually all night in the studio. Uh, you're a, you know, you've been fantastic to have on. We do thank you greatly for your time. I know you're a very busy man. Sheikh, it's been absolutely fantastic having you here. Uh, we would actually love to have you um, here all the time, and uh, inshallah, you never know what's down the track. Maybe we have to we, we have you, you know, in this country a bit longer. Um, how long are you here for, Sheikh? Still another until the 16th of September. 16th of September, Subhanallah. So time's going very very fast. Well, Sheikh, uh, again, it's been an honor having you here. Um, we we wish you all the best in the other activities that you hear, and uh, any final words for us, Sheikh? Yeah, anyone who wants to contact me personally can contact me at welcome to Arabia at yahoo.com. It's very easy to remember. Jazakallah. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Brother Malas, thank you very much. As usual, it's uh, fantastic to have you here and uh, uh, looking forward to next week, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair and uh, many thanks to the Sheikh. Thank you for the advice. Uh, Mr. Hablas. Uh, Mezin, uh, as soon as you can, if you can give me the karar about uh, <laughs> da'wah of the wife is to be good to the husband. <laughs> 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 That's the only you want to show. <laughs> <laughs> we could cut that out, please, as soon as possible. <laughs> so I can just take that part. We'll repeat it over. You can make it your phone ringtone. <laughs> No, Wallahi, uh, uh, once again, it's an absolute pleasure. Sheikh, it's a real pleasure to have you here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and make your journey easy yeah, and make it, inshallah ta'ala, successful. And Sheikh, uh, uh, um, I, 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 Wallahi, I sincerely ask Allah to make you from the people who there's no accountability for them on the day of judgment, inshallah ta'ala. Ameen. Inshallah, Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. Ameen. Ameen. Khalidina fiha. Ameen, inshallah. Well, subhanAllah, it's, uh, we've come to, to the end of our show. Um, stay tuned uh, uh, until next week. Stay, uh, keep in touch via our Facebook page. That's the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program. As we said, we'll post some details up for the Sheikh for those that are interested um, to, to follow him on his tour through Sydney. And uh, until next week, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney.